Today on Government Matters, the cyber workforce of the future. The executive branch needs help from Congress. Senator Angus King tells you what he's ready to do. A cyber partnership between the Homeland Security Department and the Small Business Administration could be a model for the rest of the government. It's two point men tell you how it works. And securing government networks for the pandemic and beyond. The way forward with DHS's Kevin Cox and SBA's James Saunders. Government Matters starts right now. From Washington, D.C. and around the world, this is Government Matters with Francis Rose. Thanks for watching the weekend edition of Government Matters, the only show covering the latest news, trends, and topics that matter to the business of government. I'm your host, Francis Rose. The top Republican on the House Armed Services Committee, Mac Thornberry, says this week that it will take until after the November elections to come up with a compromised version of the National Defense Authorization Act. Senator Angus King is an independent senator from Maine. He's co-chair of the Cyberspace Solarium Commission. Senator King, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. There are a number of amendments on each side of Capitol Hill um, that your commission recommended. Does this give you extra time to make sure that some of those amendments make it into the final bills since there won't be a compromise for another couple of months? Absolutely, Francis. Uh, we're certainly going to keep working at it. We have been all summer. We've got about a dozen of our uh, proposals in both bills. And then uh, there's another six or seven in the Senate bill that aren't in the House bill and another dozen or so in the House bill that aren't in the Senate bill. So uh, we've got some work to do to try to reconcile that. I'm in touch with uh, the leadership of the Senate committee uh, on some of these issues. Uh, and uh, the, the biggest one, Francis, that's sort of hanging out there is the national cyber director. And uh, I'd be glad to talk to you about that. That's that's in the House bill. There's a placeholder in the Senate bill, and we're working very hard to uh, persuade our Senate colleagues that this is a, an important provision, and hopefully that will be in both versions, so it will be in the final bill. I do want to talk about the National Cyber Director position, Senator King, but set that aside for now, and I understand this might be asking you to, to choose your favorite children, but are there others of these that you think are more important? Are there some of these that you think are deal killers or that need to happen this year for sure? Well, I, I, I don't know about the latter. I don't think there are any deal killers, but uh, I think the next most important issue that's still not uh, finalized in the bill is what we call continuity of the economy. Uh, it's setting up a process to plan for continuity of the economy in the case of a devastating cyber attack. We have plans developed for continuity of government, uh, but uh, what we're suggesting is that it really makes sense to be thinking the unthinkable, uh, which by the way, the pandemic has taught us to do, uh, and to think about how we would plan uh, getting the economy back on its feet in case of a catastrophic attack on the grid or the financial sector. So that's, I, I think, right up there with the National Cyber Director in terms of uh, priorities for us to try to get into this bill. What do you think is, what's your sense of the momentum for the National Cyber Director position and the kind of person, the, the kind of response that you're getting for the people who would take that kind of job? I recognize it would be a while until either this administration or another administration would fill that position, but I wonder what your sense is of the momentum around the kind of person that would take that job. Well, I, I think first there is momentum around the idea. Uh, as I mentioned, it's in the House bill uh, and recently, we had a very strong letter endorsing the concept from the U.S. Chamber of Con uh, Commerce. And then, interestingly, uh, a week or two ago, another uh, uh, memo endorsing the concept from the Heritage Foundation, uh, which I think hopefully will help uh, uh, move this along. We had a hearing before the Cyber Subcommittee of the uh, Senate uh, Armed Services Committee, Mike Rounds and Joe Manchin. Uh, I had the I had the privilege of being a witness for a senator. It's a little uncomfortable to be a witness and have to take questions instead of ask questions. But uh, we went into great depth on the issue, and I hope and believe that we satisfied uh, a lot of the concerns uh, that the the, the uh, majority on the committee have. So uh, we're working toward it. In terms of who it should be, to be honest, uh, haven't really given a great deal of thought to that. Except obviously, it should be somebody with. Uh, a deep familiarity with the issues of cyber, uh, I think management ability, because one of the important responsibilities of this new position is to uh, coordinate and generate cooperation among 
the multiple agencies in the federal government, all of which have uh, cyber responsibilities. That's one of the problems, Francis, is nobody's in charge. It's a, uh, it, it's a, uh, a hodgepodge of responsibilities and authorities. And so we're looking for somebody who can knock heads, who can, uh, who, who can uh, work with the other agencies, provide some leadership uh, on this incredibly important issue. We dug into the, the, what that person would do the last time you were on the program, Senator. One thing we didn't get a chance to discuss is what, how, the, the breadth of what that person would be doing. Would this person be interacting, for example, with General Nakasone at Cyber Command also, with uh, cybersecurity leaders inside the Pentagon also? Or is this uh, someone that you imagine to really be the leader and coordinator among the civilian agencies in government? No, the, 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 the areas of responsibility would be across the government, including the Defense Department, although an important point is this person is not in the chain of command. Uh, and this was a grave concern to uh, Senator Rounds, for example, the chair of the Cyber Subcommittee of Armed Services. Uh, we're not inserting a, a, an extra step. It's still uh, Cyber Command, Secretary of Defense, National Security Advisor, President of the United States. This person is not in that. Uh, decision-making uh, tree, if you will. However, they would work with those agencies in terms of coordination and cooperation. Uh, it, it's somewhat like uh, the analogy, of course, is to the uh, uh, the uh, director of national intelligence. We have uh, we have really good silos. <laughs> we have really capable people but they're still separated and there's not as much communication and coordination as there should be. So yes, there, there would be a, an engagement with uh, the defense related agencies, but not, a, uh, not any uh, control in a, in a command and control sense. Um, less than a minute left, Senator King. What did you learn from being a witness that you'll apply next time you're behind the, uh, the table asking the questions? Well, <laughs> to be more merciful, maybe that would be. <laughs> but but you know what, Francis? I don't think I will be. I'm still going to go after them uh, just as I always do because uh, that's how you learn things. Is uh, Somebody once said cross-examination is the greatest instrument for determining the truth ever invented. So I'll keep doing it even though I was on the receiving end a couple of times this summer. Senator Angus King, thanks very much as always. Yes, sir. Thank you, Francis. Up next, implementing continuous diagnostics and mitigation at government agencies. Straight ahead on Government Matters, reducing cyber risk across the government. You're watching ABC7. The Department of Homeland Security is counting down to the end of a pilot of the Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation Dashboard. Fifteen agencies feed information into the dashboard. Kevin Cox is CDM Program Manager at the Department of Homeland Security. James Saunders is Chief Information Security Officer at the Small Business Administration. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Kevin, I'll start with you. What's the status of the dashboard? What are you learning from the pilot program so far? So we've been working with Small Business Administration over the last year and a half uh, to test uh, with the assets that SBA, uh, Small Business Administration, has in the cloud, uh, the ability to get the CDM uh, data, the, meet the requirements of the CDM program uh, to ensure that as more and more agencies move out to the cloud that we can support them as well as support the federal leadership in terms of reporting their security posture status. In regards to the new dashboard, uh, we're rolling out uh, the Elasticsearch dashboard. We've deployed it to one agency in deployment with multiple other agencies. Uh, and so we expect as we head into October, into the beginning of the new fiscal year, uh, that we will see uh, the new dashboard uh, deployed widely throughout the, the federal agencies. Kevin, in this interaction with SBA, what have you learned from James and his team and the interaction with his team about what an agency like SBA needs from you and what you need from them in order to be able to feed information? Certainly. We want to make sure that we understand uh, each unique mission of the federal agencies, uh, that we understand the technologies they already have in place and bring our program, bring our technologies, bring our processes to them to meet where they're at. 
uh, so that we're as, as uh, have as low level of disruption as possible uh, in order for them to continue to make progress on their mission, yet helping provide the tools that will help uh, from a security posture standpoint as well as risk management standpoint. In terms of the things that we've learned from SBA with the presence that they have in the cloud, uh, the work that we've done with them is, has really been integral in terms of helping shape the CDM program's direction uh, for bringing CDM to the cloud. And, and so it's been a really great partnership uh, that has informed uh, the process uh, for deploying CDM to cloud resources and, and getting, uh, again, the agencies the perspective they need, as well as our federal leadership. James, welcome to the conversation. Thanks for joining me today. What does this look like from your perspective? What are you putting into this uh, with DHS and what are you getting out of it? Yeah, so we have a really great partnership with DHS, uh, Kevin in particular. Um, so the data we're putting into the cloud environment is everything, uh, what is no, formally known as you know, phases one through four, you know, what's in your network, who's in your network, what's happening, and how you're responding. So we're actually capturing all that data from across the entire spectrum. And we actually take that data and we, we transform it into to actions, to automations, to something that actually provides uh, impact. And the, the best part of it is that we're actually able to use the tools that we already invest in, rather than going out and procuring other tools uh, that will cause us to have uh, duplicate you no know, tool stacks. Mm -hmm. So in, in short, we're able to use what we have. We're heavy in the cloud. We, we like being in the cloud. We, we really don't want to have to go backwards in order to go with CDM. And through you know, Kevin's leadership with uh, CISA, we're able to achieve that. James, over the years, we've covered the progress that SBA's made in its modernization journey broadly across the information technology shop, not just in information security. But I wonder what of those steps you would attribute particularly to the ability that you have now to be ready to participate in something like what DHS is doing. Obviously, the transition to the cloud is one thing, but I imagine there are other elements too. Yeah, it's it's... it's I would say it's culture um, and it's the willingness to partner. Um, th those were the two big things that really help help us really take advantage of the technology we have in place versus uh, just waiting for DHS to you know, let us know what's going on. So I, I would credit you know, the culture that we built here at SBA um, and our fact to really be trailblazers to, to go for it and, and, and try different things. Because at the end of the day, you have to innovate, otherwise the, the adversaries will always be one step ahead. Kevin, is it possible that the results of this partnership with SBA will turn into an impetus to convince agencies, if you haven't accelerated your cloud transitions yet, you can now from a security perspective because you're able to give us information and we're able to give you information back to see what your peers at other organizations across government are doing? Indeed, I think from the work we've done with SBA, it, it's demonstrating what we as a program can do uh, working with the agency. Again, in regards to where they are uh, with their current computing environments, as well as their plans for the future, uh, including going to the cloud. And it's through the successful partnership with SBA and, and with other agencies on other pilots that allows us to really uh, partner well with all of the civilian agencies, but also give them a level of comfort that when we do come to work with them uh, in regards to new initiatives that they have underway, uh, that that we will uh, bring the right uh, people to the, the discussion, uh, the right technologies uh, in order to help them be successful, in order to help them get the, the right uh, visibility from a cybersecurity perspective. Because as James had indicated, our real aim is to help the agencies get in front of the adversary, get in front of the threat, and, and I think that we're, I, I would uh, argue that we are, are building that trust and, and demonstrating that through partnerships uh, such as what we have with James and his team over at SBA. We've talked about where you are today, gentlemen, when we come back for the second part of our conversation. I want to dig into what's next for both of your organizations and what you can learn from each other to project that forward. More of my conversation with Kevin Cox and James Saunders when Government Matters continues in just a moment. Welcome back. My conversation continues now with Kevin Cox, the CDM Program Manager at the Department of Homeland Security, and James Saunders, the Chief Information Security Officer at the Small Business Administration. Uh, Kevin, I, I mentioned before we broke that 
I want to move to what's next. What do you do with the partnership that you have with SBA to scale it, to work the same way with other agencies, or what have you learned that you'll use to work differently with other agencies moving forward, or whatever the next steps are, Kevin? Indeed. One of the things that we learned in working with James and his team at Small Business Administration was also the importance of the, the relationship with the cloud service providers. So within the CDM program, we are already partnered with a number of system integrators, as well as a number of the vendors in the cybersecurity community. And, and a key new partner here is the, the cloud service provider themselves. Uh, so working with them uh, for both us, the program, but more importantly, the agency to understand what tools does the CSP, the cloud service provider have uh, that, that do help meet the CDM requirements, do help the agency get the data they need uh, to, to really get the visibility they, they need of their data, uh, of threats to those, uh, those data points and, and help them be successful. And so that's, that's been a key uh, outcome of, of our work with SBA and we're already working with a number of other cloud service providers as well, as well as our other partners within uh, cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency to really build out those relationships with the CSP providers or the, the CSP uh, business partners uh, to uh, be more successful and, and be prepared to be successful as more and more agencies move to the cloud. Kevin, it strikes me that viewing those CSPs as partners makes perfect sense. If you do that, what do you need from them? What makes them a good partner? You've already described what makes James at SBA and his team a good partner. What makes that CSP a good partner in that equation as well? Well, I think one key element is communications uh, that we, uh, the program uh, from CISA is communicating to the CSP so that they understand what our objectives are, what we're trying to do to help the agencies. Uh, and, and from our program perspective, making sure we understand the, the nature of the CSP environment uh, that's being established for the agency, uh, understand the tools that the CSP provides so we can make the connections. And, and the, in, in many cases, uh, the CSPs uh, can then look to see if, if for example, a particular requirements not met now by some of the tools they provide, uh, what they might be able to do in the future uh, to fulfill those requirements, including potentially looking at some additional tools, or it, it might make sense where if, if the CSB is unable to meet a particular requirement, that we, uh, the CDM program, could bring another solution set that would uh, connect in and make sure that we can provide uh, the, the right visibility to the agency. So it's really building that those communications channels, making sure both sides, including the agency as well, understand the nature of the environment and the tools, and then building from there. James, as a result of this partnership, as a result of this information exchange with DHS, have you or do you expect to do something differently strategically, um, accelerate something you were already planning to do, but uh, maybe push the timeline faster, um, change direction, um, continue at pace because you believe it's, it's strategically the right decision, anything like that. Has this had any impact on how you're approaching security moving forward at the agency? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, so the, the biggest thing that we're looking to do um, is actually collapse our CDM programs. We actually run two CDM programs. One is what I like to call the legacy CDM, which is the, the current state, what we know all know as CDM. And the other is the, the cloud CDM modernization pilot. We actually keep the, the lights on for that. We actually use that one. Um, so what we really want to do is collapse both of these uh, CDM programs into one under Elastic and take advantage of all the data that we're pulling from our CSPs, from our on-premise systems, as well as you know, uh, a various different mobile assets. So we really want to consolidate all the data together and then get to really uh, start automating and building you know, automated responses. We're talking zero trust and touch and tick, different, different topic, of course, but we really want to start doing that with the data made available to us through uh, different CDM approaches. James, does that look like a merger? Does that look like a transition from the legacy system to the new one? Um, will you pick elements of both and combine them together? What does that look like? It looks more like a, a merger of sorts. It's, it's taking the data from uh, the current state CDM, the, the cloud-based CDM, smashing it together basically under the, uh, the new Elastic Stack dashboard 
and then really start extracting that, that data and that value out of that to feed other initiatives and other programs. For example, I really want to push agency forward and get to ongoing authorization so we move away from the three-year ATO cycle and to something that's more closer to the issue, closer to, to the threats, closer to anything we need to resolve. Um, so that's one of the things I'm looking for a CDM under the new model uh, that Kevin's leading up to accomplish for us. Kevin, we have less than a minute left. What does success look like for this dashboard program and for the, the broader dashboard concept in the CDM world? Sure, it's, it's looking at a number of key elements that the agencies get the data visibility that they need via the dashboard, uh, that the dashboard, regardless of the agency network architectures, can scale up, can perform at a high level, and ultimately that it can provide the analytic tools uh, to the agency to get the greatest value from the data that they're, they're going to get from that visibility so that they ultimately can better manage their security posture, better manage their risk, and in, in that, that that is, is a key outcome uh, for the CDM program. And as James had indicated, helping evolve how we tackle cybersecurity in the civilian agencies uh, so that we are uh, ultimately able to get in front of the threat and, and remain there. Kevin and James, thanks very much for the conversation. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Don't forget, if you miss an episode of Government Matters, you can find it on our website, govmatters.tv, and you get a preview of every newscast by signing up for our daily program guide. You just text GOVMATTERS to the number 22828. I'm back in two minutes. That's the latest from Washington. Join me weeknights at 8 and 11 on WJLA 24-7 News and next Sunday morning at 1030 on ABC7 to stay plugged in on issues that matter to the business of government. Thanks for watching. I'm Francis Rose.